stockbroker on Wall Street wants to estimate the average daily high price for Java Sun Microsystem stock. What sample size is necessary to form a 99% confidence interval to estimate the mean daily high within $0.25? Assume the population standard deviation is known to be $4.944. Right, so the first thing I want to point out in this problem is the key phrase, what sample size is necessary to form a 99% confidence interval to estimate the mean. So we're looking for a sample size here to estimate the mean. So if we want to figure that out, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to set up the following formula. N is equal to, use a parenthesis here, put a square on the outside of that, and then it'll be Z alpha divided by 2 times the population standard deviation over the margin of error. All of that's inside those parentheses, and then you're going to square that result. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is list the variables that are involved in the formula that we have to get from the problem itself. So starting with the easiest to get, we're going to put standard deviation sigma, then we're going to use E for error, and then finally Z alpha divided by 2. This last one is the only one we don't get directly from the wording of the problem. We have information in the problem to help us find it, but we don't get that directly. Let's start with the easiest one then, the standard deviation sigma. It says assume the population standard deviation is known to be 4.944. So we have that value right away, 4.944. That's easy to get, and it's usually the easiest one to find. After that, we have this guy, the error. Now the error, a lot of times it'll use the phrase margin of error in the problem. This problem doesn't have that phrase, but it does say we want to estimate the mean daily high within $0.25. So that phrase within is a key phrase indicating the margin of error that's being given. So in this case, we're going to assume the error is 0 0.25, 0 0.25. And then lastly, we have one other number in the problem. We have this 99% confidence. In order to figure out the z alpha divided by 2, we have to have a confidence level. And so if you remember how we did that, um, essentially, if we wanted to have more accuracy, we went to the t-table, and we'd look up alpha divided by 2 under the infinity row of the t-table. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to first figure out what alpha is. We're going to divide it in half, and we're going to look it up on the t-table. So let's go ahead and do that. If we have z alpha divided by 2 here and our confidence level is 99%, let's start with the fact that the confidence level as a decimal is 0.99. That will lead to the idea that the alpha level is 0 0.01. Remember, if you have 99% confidence, you have 1% significance because the two of them add up to 100% always. As a decimal, that's 0.99 and 0 0.01. Then, of course, that leads to the idea that alpha over 2, which is half of that, is 0 0.005, so there it is. This number we look up on the, on the t-table, so look up 0 0.005 on the t-table under infinity. So under the infinity, or the last row of the t-table, depending on what t-table you're working with, you have z-values. So we're going to look up this 0 0.005 on our t-table, and we should be able to find our z-alpha divided by 2. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do that now, and we'll come back and we'll finish the problem. Okay, so we're looking for the critical z-value that corresponds to a 99% confidence level. Um, that means that alpha is 0 0.01, and that means half of that is 0 0.005. So let's identify that column first. So there's the column, the T.005 column. Now, because Z values are only found at the bottom of a T table, we're going to go all the way to the bottom to the very last row where it says infinity. So let me move this up until we get there. Okay, so once we're there at the bottom, we see that the number next to our isolated column is 2.576. So 2.576 is our desired critical z value. Okay, now we found the z alpha divided by 2 value to be 2.576. Our next step is to plug these values into our formula and calculate our sample size. Okay, so first thing I'll put in is my 2.576, that's my critical z value, then times my standard deviation, 4.944, and then from there I will divide my margin of error into both of those numbers. All right, and then finally, square the result. Okay, 
Let's see this calculation on our calculator, and we want to talk about the rounding rule at the end here. So 2.576 times 4.944 divided by 0.25. So we end up with the answer 50.942976 or so, right? And then we're supposed to square that value. So let's square that answer. And when we're done, we get a pretty large sample size. We have 2,595.186 dot, 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 right? Okay. So first thing we want to do is to talk about the rounding rule here. If you were to round this normally, you would say 2,595. However, with sample size, we're going to round it to 2,596. Here's the explanation. First of all, you have to round to a whole number because we're looking for a number of days to be sampled or in many cases, a number of people to be sampled or household to be sampled or TV sets to be sampled. Whatever it is, we always want to sample a whole number amount, right? We're not going to grab a fraction of a person or a fraction of a TV set. That's impossible. You might be able to look at a fraction of a day like in this example, but that still doesn't make sense because we're looking for the mean daily high. So we want to be looking at the daily high for the entire day. So you have to take a full day. So this decimal is not acceptable. So you know you have to round it to a whole number. And the other question is, why did we go up? Why didn't we round normally? 2,595.186 should have been 2,595, right? But the issue is that this is the minimum sample size required to achieve these quality levels, right? We want to have this amount of error. And we want to have this confidence level, which is connected to this critical Z value. Well, in order to have um, the confidence level of 99%, like we promised, we have to make sure that we don't go lower than this minimum sample size. So if we're stuck rounding it, we have to round up always. And that guarantees that we'll have more quality than we specified. And it's okay to have a higher confidence level than you promised, right? Nobody's gonna be upset if you have more quality than you promised. If you promise 99% confidence, you end up with 99.1% confidence. That's not necessarily a bad thing. That's a good thing, right? Um, in the case of, or if you promised, you know, that you would have 0.25 error and you end up with a 0.24 error, that's a good thing, right? To have less error than you promised or have a higher confidence level than you promised. What's not acceptable, however, is for you to end up having a lower level of confidence or a larger error than you promised, because that means that the quality level you specified is not being met. So it's better to have more than to have less. So if we have to do something here, we'll round up always. So always remember to round up for that problem.